Everybody's going to hear you laughing. I know. All right. So we're going to talk about constant speed propellers this week. Our last full week of the semester. How about that? And then, uh, yes, we will have a test on Wednesday of next week, too. So, Yay. All right. So we've, we've been talking about propellers. And really, this, shouldn't, this, this almost should be a very easy week for you because we've already talked about the theory of propellers. We've talked about um, prop governors. We've talked about um, props that move, ground adjustable, um, in-flight adjustable. And so now all we have to do is just bring it back and just talk about constant speed props, which, like I said, we've, since we've been talking about governors, this should just be just, just flow right in. So, uh, so there we are. So constant speed props and... What kind of plane is that? Piper Yeah, it's pretty nice, isn't it? Yeah. They don't sell them in piston anymore. That would do turbo All right. Uh, this is just something that uh, before we get, <laughs> we'll backtrack. Um, oh, you guys seem to have this pretty well, but we're talking about governors. Uh, the direction of rotation was based upon where these plugs go. The one of the things I hate about your book is it's, I always kind of think of things as like clockwise comes before counterclockwise. And so I would associate clockwise with the letter A and counterclockwise with the letter B. And your book says if the plug goes in B, then it, it is clockwise. I just turn it around and go, okay, if the, the A hole is open, that's <laughs> clockwise. And if the B hole is open, then that's counterclockwise. And I had talked about, um, and I will ask you on all of your orals, hey, which way does your pump rotate? And I talked about this special gasket that goes into between the engine and the governor. And I said that it has this raised screen on it. And that raised screen, you don't push it towards the engine because there's nothing cut out, but you do have the cutout on the prop governor side. So I talked about that. All right, now we'll talk about props. All right, so let's see here. What kind of prop is that, by the way? Hamilton, Hamilton Standard. Two position. Two position. I don't remember you said that. All right. So, all right, here we go. Constant speed props. <clears throat> What's the constant part? Speed of the aircraft? In inches per second over here? No, the constant part is the RPM, the revolutions per minute. So when I say, what's the purpose of a governor? The governor is a speed sensing mechanism that will uh, either add or subtract or take away oil from the propeller to try and keep the engine at the exact same RPM. And, uh, let's see, theory of operation. Well, we can start with a definition. Definition of prop that automatically varies the blade angle to achieve a constant engine RPM. A prop that automatically varies the blade angle to achieve a constant RPM. Well, let me say engine RPM just so we're all clear. Hey, by the way, I got my first YouTube hater the other day. No. Yeah, sweet. Oh. What, what did they say? They, they said something. Uh, it, was, I don't, it was one of the prop videos this week. Uh, Nothing cures my insomnia like your lecture. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least you cured something. I, at least, I know. Please, please send your donations, too. <laughs> Any ideas? We'll get them. <laughs> no idea. 
<laughs> Some troller. How do you find your pitch? I don't know. All right, prop will use a fixed force to drive the propeller to either high or low blade angle. So what's a fixed force? Okay, so prop, that's the greater of the two, so we'll talk about that one. Prop will use a fixed force to, I'll say drive, the prop to either a high or low blade angle. What do I mean by either? So it's just the fixed force just does both? All right, so remember, if the prop does not have counterweights, then uh, it will, the fixed force will always make the prop go to low pitch, high RPM. And then if I add counterweights, it's going to reverse it, and then the prop will go fixed forces, high pitch, low RPM. All right. Uh, fixed forces are so fixed forces are. We're going to add some now. Centrifugal twisting force of the blade. You said that. Centrifugal twist force or twisting force of the blade is one. Two, we could have centrifugal T-W-I-S-T-I, twisting force of the counterweights. if it has them installed, or three, a spring acting on a piston. I would put spring or other force, because we could add air, um, acting on a piston. Yes. Um, is it centrifugal twisting force on the counterweights, or is it just regular Oh, uh, you know, you got a good point there. There really isn't twisting, so it's just regular centrifugal force. I guess the thing is I like to think of it as centrifugal twisting force because it takes the place of the other. All right, so we got our fixed forces. And then we have... Oh, and why, why am I not going to put aerodynamic twisting force? Because all the other forces are so much greater that it's, I'm going to consider it negligible. It doesn't, sure, it's there and it helps, but <coughs> centrifugal is always going to win. I neither wish to point fingers or dispurging comments at people who are stepchildren or people with red hair. No. <laughs> No, I don't know what you said. <laughs> I you want to make fun of somebody because people without sleeves on their shirts. <laughs> uh, propeller, what is it? Yeah, I'm off track. Propeller uses a variable force to drive the propeller in the opposite direction of the fixed force. And what is well, what is that variable force then? Is what? Oil pressure from what? From governor. Right. Prop uses a variable force, meaning I can increase it or decrease it. I can control it. So prop uses a variable force to drive the propeller. in the opposite direction of the fixed force.
true story when they first came out with uh, variable pitch props and governors it was the RAF who was the first one to use them and because of the forces involved they actually were the first ones to use the statement may the force be with you and it was what it was all referring to huh no, there's nothing true about that <laughs> I was looking at Prince to see if he was going to catch him. <laughs> he, just, he just shakes his head at me <laughs> not true <laughs> governor well, we talked about the governor. Um, let's see. How much do you want to talk about the governor again? As engine changes RPM, the governor flyweights move the pilot valve to either drain the oil from the prop or send engine oil to the prop. We already know that, right? So what we could say, governor, we'll, we'll change this up, has we can, uh, three positions. Wow, I just really messed that up. O S I T I O. Three positions. What are the three positions? And I'm obviously there's in between, but what are they? On speed. Okay, on speed. In an on speed condition, will the governor send oil to or from the prop or none of the above? None of the above. Okay. In an overspeed, does it send oil to the prop or drain it from the prop? Or that's not a complete question. That's not a complete question because it depends on whether or not it has counterweights or not. All right, so you guys are, at least some of you are. Um, yeah, some of you are. I will say it's probably Dennis because his, his head isn't overheating because he's got no sleeves and it keeps things cooler. And so. But then he put a hat on to try and keep the heat. So I don't know. His theory went out. All right. That's better. I can think. About time. All right. So during run up, during run up, what is run up? What does that what do you mean by run up? You just run up there. You just run All right. That's the. Yes, when I bring the engine RPM up to like 1700 <laughs> RPM, when I'm doing a pre-flight check, when I'm doing magneto check, uh, would I want to check my, um, when I'm doing a run-up, would that be a good time to check my uh, something or another? I don't know. Um, my mixture check? My idle mixture? Perfect time. Perfect time, yeah. No, that's a ridiculous time. First of all, why would I be checking idle mixture up at 1700, would it work? No. no, no, it's not even on that circuit. Two, why would I want to shut the engine off at higher RPM like that? So no, we don't do that there. During run up, uh, what are we going to check at run up? Mags, Mags and carb heat, carb heat and prop now we'll do prop governor. So during run up, um, what was I doing? Run up, take off and landing. Prop is in high RPM, low pitch, handle forward, all the way up. So when we talk about this prop, this knob in the propeller, I thought I actually had a picture. I don't. When we're talking about this knob in the propeller, what is it called? Prop control. Prop control. And it's labeled as what? Yeah. RPM. It says high RPM, low P RPM, and sometimes feather. So when we're talking about this, I, you know, I'm getting weird answers. Like it says more speed or spring, less speed or, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say high pitch or low pitch. It says RPM, high RPM, Low RPM, high RPM forward, low RPM back. That's what it's labeled as. So, and remember, you as a mechanic, you have to know this and you have to rig things properly. So when you get to the governor and you're putting it on the, the governor's test stand, I'm going to ask you, hey, which 
side of this wheel are you going to be attaching the push-pull cable? And you have to know that. You can't really put things on an airplane and then take it out and, and see if you were right. You have to know ahead of time. So that's why I'm asking you questions there like that. All right, so that's, uh, that's kind of our, our theory of operation, what we got going on, um, more or less a, a repeat. Um, now let's talk about some specific props. The Hamilton Standard. Hamilton Standard what? Hamilton Standard counterweighted prop. And we really talked about this last week. It's this prop. And what did you call it a few minutes ago? It's no longer a two position prop. Now it's, now it's a constant speed prop. So what do I really need to do to make it a constant speed prop? Well, let's go back. When it was a two speed prop, what was my control? Two Oil. Oil two and? From. From. And it was just a lever in the cockpit. High RPM, low RPM. It had two positions, all the way forward and all the way back. Well, now what if I attach a governor to it and the governor can sense the engine RPM and all by itself, add a little bit of oil and take a little bit back, add a little bit, take a little bit back. Could it not hold it somewhere in its mid-range? Mm -hmm. That's exactly what happens. All right, so the counterweighted prop. Now we're talking about a counterweighted prop, which is a constant speed prop. So let's see here, we have uh, prop design. And I like starting with this one because we've already learned it as a, as a two position prop. Now we're just gonna add a governor and see how it acts. So prop design, well, the prop is basically the same as the two position. Basically the same as the two position, but with a few changes. Different blade angle. Why do you suppose it has a different blade angle range? Because you can, because now you can control it more. It's not stuck all the way at the high end and stuck all the way at the low end. All right, and uh, uses large springs in the piston to aid centrifugal action toward high blade angle. All right, so now we have large springs in the piston to aid centrifugal action toward high blade angle. And what did the counterweights do? They reversed uh, the action of the blade, the default position of the blade. Okay, changes the default like that. So counterweights on blades, let's see, um, cause the fixed force to move blades to high blade angle. So the spring is helping the counterweights do what? There we go. So now it's just going to use some springs to help it out. And then what does, what's my variable force always? Oil pressure from the, I almost said engine oil. I'm going to change this to prop governor. Oil, there we go, drives prop to low pitch. So remember, it's just a really simple formula. You look at a prop. 
Does it have counterweights? Yes or no? If it has counterweights, then the counterweights mean that the fixed force always drives the prop to high blade angle. If no counterweights, centrifugal twisting force goes to low blade angle. The governor has to be set up to do the opposite then. So some governors will have, if they go into an overspeed, they're going to send oil to the prop. And some governors, if they go into overspeed, they're going to drain oil from the prop, right? You just have to look for the counterweights and start there. Uh, let's see, governor. Talk about the governor. Yeah, there's a couple good things in there. All right, so it's pretty much uh, similar to what we talked about last week. So I guess if you have any questions, you just go back and read your notes from last week. All right, but has a control pulley, has a control pulley on the side, connected to cockpit, cockpit control. And so it's got this on this particular one, and, and usually the, the round engines, they'll have a, a round disc attached to it. And around the disc, there's all these holes that go all the way around, and it allows you to put it on in various ways. And a lot of these older aircraft, they actually have cables that run on both sides. And it's going to go back, and it's going to connect and have some other pulleys. There we go. We'll make some other pulleys. And it'll go back to a lever in the cockpit. And so when you move the lever one way, it's going to move this one way. Let's see if I move this. I don't want to do that. So if I move one way, it's going to move one way, another way, another way. Modern aircraft don't use this whole pulley system and cables running back and forth. They use a single push-pull cable. So you have a single push-pull cable that just has a housing. And inside of it, you have another cable that's going to come up and connect to something. So in the cockpit, I'll have a knob. If I pull back on the knob, it's going to pull this way and it's going to make it turn this way, right? And if I push forward on the knob, it's going to push forward and make it go this way. Well, what if that's backwards? How am I going to change it around? What's that? Move it 180 degrees. Just connect it down here. <laughs> now, if I connect it down here, everything's the other way around. You guys follow? If I pull back on it, it's going to go this way, as where it was that way before. And if I push forward, it's going to go this way. So, so that's. If the angles unplug, they need to go backwards. No. No, no, no. Okay. So when we talk about A holes and B holes. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> You're talking about the direction of rotation of the governor when viewed from the drive end. This could be, governor could be facing this way, it could be this way. You could put the cap on different ways. So this is completely irrelevant from that. What you have to do as a mechanic is you have to stop and think about it. Inside of this governor, there's a rack and pinion in there. And so a rack and pinion is when you have a bunch of gears right here against another gear that goes up and down. And if I rotate it one way, it's going to make this go up. And if I rotate another way, it's going to make it go down. And you have to figure out when you rotate this, is it making this, which is putting pressure on the speeder spring, more, more pressure or less pressure? So you have to think it all the way through and figure out which way puts pressure on the spring. If I put pressure on the spring, is that high pitch or low pitch? Well, it's going to be putting it in an, if I put more attention on the spring, it's going to be putting it into a under speed, which is going to tell the engine, you better go to flat pitch. So this is prop handle forward. Under speed is prop handle forward. So you have to figure that all out, all right? But it's not real hard. But you have to do that as a mechanic. As a mechanic, you have to figure all this out. Hey, as a pilot, guess what I need to know? High RPM, low RPM, high RPM, low RPM. I'm done. Where's the test? 
All right. You guys get the hard part. You know, it's like, okay, high RPM, low RPM. Then speed or spring pressure, less speed or spring pressure. This is under speed. Under speed means oil is now on my, this prop counterweighted or not counterweighted. Well, if it's, you know, not counterweighted, then that's going to mean that, um, that oh, it's going to drain oil when it goes under speed. So you have to figure all that out and you have to keep that straight in your head. Now, it's not easy, but that's, that's our job. That's why we get more money. Uh, okay. Has a control pulley. I got that. Um, incorporated into this, which I didn't draw, and there's either, well, there's usually a pin. You can set where that pin goes. And that's really what all, most of those holes are for. Number one, so you can adjust where the cable goes. But two, you put this pin in there. And on the back side, which we can't see right now, is another screw just like an idle set screw, which you can address so that you can stop which way that, how far that wheel goes. So if you get into the cockpit and you run up the engine, you take it all the way open to wide open throttle, push it throttles all the way forward. You got the prop all the way forward, and hopefully the mixture all the way forward too. And that thing goes past red line. So you run it up, you go, well, look at that. It's a couple, three, 400 RPM uh, past red line, right? <laughs> I hope you don't do that. Uh, <laughs> huh? It's, yeah, it's, it's all ball bearings anyway. Uh, okay, so this little screw allows you to adjust this back so you can bring the RPM back. So it's actually adjust, it's the, what we'd call the high RPM stop. So control pulley. On the, so the control pulley incorporates. A stop screw to set high RPM. Even if it doesn't have this round deal on it, because modern aircraft, they just have an arm. They don't have their whole round thing. It's just an arm. It's really easy. There's only one way to hook it up. Arm comes down, you put a bolt it on, you just bring that arm up. Hook it up to the push-pull cable, but you still have that set screw up there, or not set screw, the stop screw, so you can adjust the RPM. What's the proper way to adjust that? Line it up slowly until you get the red line and hold it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's the hard part. You bring it up, and you're like, okay, I've reached red line, and you still should have some cushion. So it's like, do you do you want to go past that cushion and see just how much further it's going to go, or leave it right there? So most of the time they're, unless you're putting a new engine together, it's, it's adjusted right within five, 10 RPM. And usually you have that much error inside of a tack anyway. So I have a handheld check, tack checker. And what, what you can do is just bring it all the way up, watch your red line, bring it up to red line. And then you you can just squeeze it just a, just a little bit more. If you go a little bit more and it starts to go 5, 10, 15 over, then I'll just pull back on that. It needs to be adjusted. And I'll start adjusting the screw on it. But that's not static. That's it, uh, it's not, I don't really call it static when it's on a constant speed because it's a red line check, really. Okay. It's, always gonna, it's always supposed to go to red line unless the manual says otherwise, and they usually don't. All right, so the rest of the notes I have in here we've already gone over is prop control has moved forward, spring pressure has increased, flyweights moved to under speed condition, the prop goes low pitch. But again, that's going to depend on if it's got counterweights. Well, this does have counterweights. Uh, so I guess we could talk about this one specifically. So on this specific prop, um, oops, I forgot this point, may include, may include a balance spring. above the speeder how many of you have discovered that the governor that you're working in lab has a second spring above the speeder spring all right what's that there for Still keeps it at um, yeah. high pitch. There you go. It's I should change this. Not above the speeder springs. Really above the speeder rack is more appropriate. Above the speeder rack um, to set fly weights. To cruise RPM. It 
if control breaks. So if this wire were to break right there, you want it to get, find a cruise RPM. So it's going to go mid-range. By the way, what happens if the speeder spring breaks? Right, speeder spring breaks. Flyweights are going to do one, one thing, and that is overspeed. overspeed. There's nothing holding them down. They go to overspeed. Goes to overspeed, it's going to tell the prop, hey, you need to... Now you got to you got to increase the pitch. You got to slow this engine down, so it's going to go to high pitch. Doesn't matter if it's got counterweights or not. That's what it's going to tell it to do. All right. Uh, as prop control is moved forward, as prop control is moved forward, spring pressure is increased. Flyweights move to what position? I increase spring pressure. What's going to happen? Under speed. Abbreviate US. Under speed condition. And prop. goes to low pitch. And if I pull back, the opposite happens, right? I decrease spring pressure. Flyweights go to, into a overspeed condition. And if it's overspeed condition, the prop's going to increase pitch. All right. Far too much information here to even go over because this is becoming over and over. So we can just talk about it though. So cruise, consider an aircraft and cruise flight. Find a long cruise, right? Cruise flight, I want a higher RPM. Prop control is? <laughs> I need to draw a picture. I'll make me draw a picture. Yeah, that'll a lever. Oh. Well, you got to at least put some color in there. I'm working on it. It's got to be blue. Blue, yeah. Here we go. All right, enough Forward. High what? RPM. Low what? Low RPM. Okay. Wow. Now, if, you, if that drawing doesn't do it for you, there's nothing I can do for you. <laughs> All right. So, there we go. Uh, pilot desires higher RPM. The prop control is moved. Forward. Forward. All right. This rotates the control pulley. Rotates the control pulley. Which moves the speeder rack up or down? Down. Down. All right. And by going down, what did I do to the, the spring? Okay, increase tension on the spring. That means that the flyweights went down, under speed. What happened to the pilot valve, up or down? down? Down, all right, all right. So as pressure moves the flyweights inward, lowers the pilot valve. Uh, governor oil pressure is now what? Sent to the prop? Or drained from the prop in this. I'm talking about this particular propeller. Okay. So we, we were, had a consensus going. So I just put this. I just moved the lever forward. I need the engine to go faster. So that means that I, my pitch needs to get lower. What's going to drive this one to low pitch? Oil pressure in this one because that's counterweight. So we'll back up a step. So uh, add spring pressure, move the flyweights in, drop the pilot valve. Pilot valve then directed oil to the prop to decrease the to, to overcome the counterweight centrifugal force and bring the prop to a 
lower pitch. Everybody got that? All right. So as soon as we get to the right pitch, as we go to the as the pitch starts decreasing, what's going to happen to the engine RPM? Increase. It's going to start increasing. It's going to spin that governor faster, and then uh, flyweights are going to find equilibrium, and it's going to do what? <coughs> On speed, and what's it going to do with the oil coming back and forth? It's well, in theory, it's going to shut it down. No more oil to the prop. No more oil draining from the prop. All right. But that was fine, but now I decided I don't want it in high, high pitch anymore. I, want, I, I don't like that RPM. I want to slow it down. So I bring the handle, and I do it forward or back. Backwards. Bring it back a little bit. So now I'm saying, hey, I want to go slower. So I increase or decrease pressure on the springs? Decrease. Decrease. So the flyweights are going to say, oops, we're in an overspeed, right? So overspeed. So in this particular prop, what's, gonna, what's the governor going to do with oil? Yep, lift the pilot valve up, drain some oil back from the propeller. Now the propeller's got the springs and the counterweights, which are going to go high, higher pitch. So it's going to go higher pitch. Goes at a higher pitch, it's going to start slowing the engine down. Slows the engine down, less centrifugal force on the counter of the flyweights. Flyweights are going to come in, equilibrium with the spring pressure, and all is happy. All right. Everybody got that? Mm -hmm. All right. That sounds like a good place to take a break then.